How's it going guys? We have a challenging question for immunology for step one and step two. Nearly identical question shows up in one of the internal medicine clinical mastery series forms for 2CK. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, M-A-N underscore medical. The links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. So 41-year-old woman, 20-year history of multiple respiratory tract infections, including four pneumonias and five episodes of sinusitis. She usually requires antibiotic therapy for bronchitis three to four times a year. Vitals are within normal limits. She has vitiligo in her hands. Auscultation of the chest shows a loud P2. Coarse breath sounds are heard bilaterally. Question wants to know the most appropriate next step in diagnosis. Now, I've talked about in many of my prior audio cubing questions, if you've been following my content, how a loud P2, I've, I've harped on this, okay? This means pulmonary hypertension slash core pulmonale. You need to memorize loud P2 or loud S2. There's no such thing as a loud A2 on your simile. This is the pulmonic valve slamming shut due to high distal pressure. So this is synonymous with pulmonary hypertension or core pulmonale. In this case, it would be a result of lung disease that the patient has, presumably from these chronic respiratory infections. Okay, that's what's going on here. So vitiligo on the hands, I'll explain this as we move through. So uh, let's just look at the answer choices. Choice A, measurement of CD4 T cell count, wrong fucking answer. This is not HIV. Okay, I mean, obviously very... Uh, juicy, uh, enticing answer choice if you're just not sure what's going on. But even if you don't know, I mean, this patient has a 20-year history of respiratory tract infections. So this idea that the patient would have uh, uncontrolled AIDS uh, over 20 years, okay, without having demised at this point, uh, not having been on heart therapy, pretty unlikely. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, measurement of serum complement concentrations, wrong answer. This could apply to terminal complement deficiency, a deficiency of C5 through C9 in patients who have recurrent nasarial infections, either within themselves or a family, okay? So exceedingly high yield for immunology. In fact, this is past level immunology for step one, okay? So they'll just give you someone who had waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome, where they can give you which is a meningococcal septicemia causing a bilateral hemorrhagic necrosis of the adrenal glands. They can give you meningitis where there's non-blanching rash on the abdomen. That's nasary meningitis, okay, recurrent gonococcal arthritis, et cetera. And they just want you to know it's terminal complement deficiency. Obviously, complement proteins can be measured in other instances, okay? I mean, in, in uh, PSGN, you'd have decreased C3. In SLE flares, decreased C3. In uh, cryoglobulinemia, decreased C4. In this case... Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, measurement of serum immunoglobulin concentrations is the correct answer. Now, this question is, this vignette is either going to be IgA deficiency or CVID, okay? Chronic variable immunodeficiency. Now, both conditions can present as a teenager to young adult or older who has recurrent sinopulmonary infections. Both conditions can present with autoimmune phenomena, vitiligo, pernicious anemia, diabetes type 1. There's no specific HLA association you have to memorize. So this is a high-yield vignette, and we say, well, it could be IgA deficiency, it could be CVID, so hence we're going to measure the serum immunoglobulin concentrations. Obviously, if IgA alone is down, okay, diagnosis, IgA deficiency, uh, and if all of them are down, then it's going to be CVID, okay? Normal B cell count in CVID, they just can't mature properly into plasma cells. Don't confuse with uh, Bruton, a sick boy, okay, from six months of age who has recurrent bacterial infections. That's uh, failure of B cell development, period. So CVID or IgA deficiency in this case, and I'm just going to quickly whip through the other answer choices here, rapid strep test, wrong fucking answer. Long discussion when we talk about family medicine, okay? Real fucking quick, you just need to know the center criteria. C E N T O R is how we differentiate bacterial from viral upper respiratory tract viral infections. So, if we have uh, there's four points number one, lack of cough, not cough. Okay, lack of cough is one point. Number two is going to be fever 38 or greater. Number three, uh, lymphadenopathy, usually cervical. Number four, tonsillar exudates. If you have zero or one, likely viral infection, supportive care only, or warm saline gargle, or viscous lidocaine gargle, or just acetaminophen, they're all supportive care for USMLA. 
If two or more points of center criteria, more likely to be bacterial. Next best step in management is rapid strep test. If negative, you're going to do a throat culture, not a sputum culture. Send the patient home on amoxicillin or penicillin. If a teenager gets a rash, that's going to be EBV, mono. Okay, mono, even though a virus, for whatever fucking reason, presents with all four center. And if it's a kid who gets a rash, we just assume allergy to beta-lactam. Okay, so it's high yield for family medicine uh, when you get there. Choice E, spiral CT, wrong answer. This is going to be for pulmonary embolism diagnosis, okay? So uh, someone has a swollen leg, DVT, and then gets uh, shortness of, acute onset, shortness of breath, tachycardia, okay, sinus tachy. That's going to be presumed PE. You're going to give uh, subcutaneous anoxaparin, that's your heparin. And then you're going to do a spiral CT of the chest for diagnosis. Pregnant woman, you're going to do a ventilation perfusion scan. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.